Good day, mates. Polka Dragon here. You know, I love Marvel films. Iron Man, The Avengers, and Guardians of the Galaxy are my favorite Marvel films. I just started making a collection of Marvel films, which, by the way, I so can't wait for the Deadpool movie to come out on DVD. I'm so hyped up for that. And I just saw Captain America Civil War not long ago. It's a great film. Watch it. It's fantastic. But we're not here to talk about the film. We're going to talk about a game a friend of mine introduced me to. Let's review Marvel Avengers Alliance for Facebook and iOS devices. Marvel Avengers Alliance is a turn-based social network game developed by Offbeat Creations and published by Playdom on March the 1st, 2012. It is based on characters and storylines published by Marvel Comics and written by Alex Irvine. The game is available as an Adobe Flash application via the social networking website Facebook. It officially launched on Facebook at March the 1st, 2012. It was initially released as a promotion for the 2012 Marvel Studios crossover film, The Avengers. It was nominated for Best Social Game on the on the G4TV.com Video Game Awards 2012 and won. It was made available for iOS devices on the 13th of June 2013, and the Android version was also available on March the 20th, 2014. It was announced that the service running on Playdom's official website would be discontinued. However, the game continues to be available via Facebook. After Marvel Avengers Alliance, they made Marvel Avengers Alliance Tactics. It launched on June 2014, but it was soon shut down on the 22nd of October 2014. And from the video footage I've seen on YouTube, it looked great! So, why did they shut it down after a couple of months? Was it a partnership between Marvel and Disney? Was it buggy? Glitchy? Something? I tried to ask in the staff about it, but I've never gotten the answer from them. Guess we will never know. I also have a funny history with this game as well. When I tried to play the game again after I moved house, this is before I got my computer, I tried playing the game again on the local library computer. They were on a time limit, up to an hour at most. And when I finally got my computer and tried playing it again two years later, the game was frozen. No planes that were there, I was stuck on the mission screen when I tried to select it, and the menus were fused and cramped together. I contacted the staff, I sent them the picture of the problem, and the reason they said they acted like this is because I didn't finish the tutorial. <laughs> Whoops. In the first season, the game revolves around a galactic event called the Pulse hitting Earth. This event released a strange compound called Isoate. Several villains, villain organizations consisting of AIM, the Brotherhood of Mutants, the Hand, Hydra, and the Magaia, and extra-dimensional menaces try to take advantage of it, leading to a villain alliance called the Syndicate. The player is a new S.H.I.E.L.D. recruit dispatched by Nick Fury and Maria Hill. As the game advances, more heroes join the conflict as playable characters. It is divided into 12 chapters, each consisting of 6 missions. The 6th mission of the 8th chapter requires a specific hero to unlock. The season ends with the destruction of the Syndicate and the resurrection of the Red Skull and the civil war within Hydra. In the second season, S.H.I.E.L.D. travels to other parts of the world, San Francisco, Great Britain, Wakanda, and the Savage Lands. The heroes investigate the Circle of Eight, a mysterious organization that is killing low-level villains and heroes for some unknown reason. The Circle of Eight is revealed to be led by Serpent as Guardian God of Fear, who is also assembling heroes to be his worthy. Like the previous season, there will be 12 chapters, each with 6 missions, completing all missions, deploys heroic battles and challenges in a, in a chapter unlocks a new costume for a hero. Players take control of an Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. and can fully customize the Agent by getting experience, leveling up, and equipping their Agent with various weapons and uniforms obtained within the game. 
They can also team up with up to two out of the current 149 available Marvel heroes in the game, each with their own unique skills and abilities, where some heroes are locked and they can only be recruited on some occasions. Most of them are available from general recruitment, and they can be bought with command points and gold. Which, by the way, is so satisfying to make all that grinding and gathering worth it in the end when you hear that jingle. Gameplay itself consists of turn-based fights that pit the player's agent and heroes against one or more waves of free or less enemies. With each character having unique attacks, there are six character classes. Blasters, Bruisers, Scrappers, Infiltrators, Tacticians, and Generalists. The first five classes have specific strengths and weaknesses to one of the other classes in a rock, paper, scissors style. Blasters have guaranteed critical hits against Bruisers and ignore their defensive stats. Bruisers increase their stats when they are attacked or be attacked by Scrappers. Scrappers have a second automatic attack, a follow-up attack against Infiltrators. Infiltrators gain the ability to counter enemies' attacks after attacked or being attacked by tacticians, and tacticians gain an extra turn when they're attacked or be attacked by blasters. The generalist class has no special strengths or weaknesses against other classes. Some playable heroes can switch classes during the game, and a character class may be changed with alternate costumes. The player has access to uniforms of all the classes. You can also research equipment and isoways to help you out in battle, but it does take time to finish unless you speed it up with gold. Cole collections are a feature used to recruit new characters to your team, most of whom were previous villains. It was first unveiled as part of the Special Operations Cry Havoc. For a limited time, player vs player PvP tournaments are available where the player fights to reach different tiers. Silver, Gold, Diamond, Vibranium, and Animantium. Wait a minute. Shouldn't a Vibranium be above Animantium? I heard Vibranium can cut Animantium. Meh. Oh well. Players who place at the Animantium tier at the end of the PvP season are awarded a new hero. PvP fighting can also be done during non-tournament times, in practice mode only. Special operations are limited time challenges in which the player has to complete at least 25 tasks in order to obtain a new hero. Unique boss items can be acquired through battle, and special weapons or items are awarded for every 5 tasks completed. The only exception has been the first Spec Ops mission, in which the player had to get a 5 star Mars 3 in all of the missions. You can also get daily awards every day, and you can share gifts with your friends. You can also get distress calls from your friends as well. So if you're facing a tough boss, they can help you out. So if there's a boss, and you don't know what to do, who are you going to call? An overpowered hero or friend of mine race that could tear them apart? Damn! The Facebook version is awesome. Not so much about the iOS and the Android version. First of all, it's impossible to find it on Google Play now. But, luckily for you guys, if you're watching this on your iOS device and your Android devices, you can find it by following the link in the description I supplied below. Now, about the Android and iOS versions of the game, I can understand on why they need to hide this version from Google Play. The iOS and Android versions are somewhat lacking compared to the Facebook versions. There's no option to do research, you can't connect to your Facebook account and link versions together, and the game crashes most of the time. One of them being when you're trying to equip certain gear to your ancient. It can be very hard trying to recruit allies on the Android and iOS versions of the game. It could have been so much easier if we could just have the ability to link them up with our Google Play or Facebook accounts. Hopefully, I hope Planar manages to patch the game with that feature. The game is awesome on Facebook. If you have so many friends on Facebook, you can have a lot of gifts shared between each other. That way, you can have an easier time playing the game. Clearly, the Facebook version is a lot better than the Android and iOS version. I just wish the developers reworked that version so they can link up with our Facebook versions and connecting to our Google Play accounts. 
and the game can play the exact same way as the Facebook version. But if you guys are still curious on the Android and iOS version, here is my ID on that version. And like I said before, if you want to play the Android and iOS version of the game, the link is in the description below. Just be aware of game crashes and bugs. And if you want to add me on Facebook, so that way you can add me on the game itself, just message me on either Google+, Twitter, or Skype. Again, in the description. I just wish this game was multi-platform. It would be great if it was on the Nintendo 3DS and Steam. I wish that would happen. Hopefully. Now, as for my next video game review, it's gonna be one big surprise. So big, it just might fill you with determination. My name is Porky Dragon, and I wish you guys happy gaming.